Welcome to the series of how these renderings were made. Today we are going to analyze this project made by Lu Juan Nunes, architectural designer from Brazil. He has told us all the techniques and resources he used to make this image using SketchUp and V-Ray. They searched for a project to be used as a reference through the website Tarch Daily, where they researched and chose the work of architects Salberto Burkhard and Caroline H. Chaveri, called Nilo Houses. After choosing the reference project, they began the selection of the images to represent. Difficult choice, seeing these photographs by Juan Antonio Monsalve. For the modeling, they got access to the necessary plans from the same web page used to select the reference. They modeled the house with SketchUp and used only one of the photos as reference for the final image. The rest of the images were used for inspiration and to get a better idea of the surrounding vegetation. For the 3DD model, they sought to make something that was simple, but met the needs and represented the reference well. As you can see, there is not a very work terrain, they focused only on what was necessary for what they wanted to present. The tiled floors were created with the Floor Generator plugin, with these settings that we see in the image. The three models they used for the decoration were acquired through 3Sky and converted from 3DS Max to SketchUp with the SimLab plugin. The landscaping and vegetation in general was done with the plugins Scatter and Loud Work. Vegetation and boulders were produced and distributed with Scatter. This vegetation also acquired from 3Ski and distributed with Scatter. The shrubs have been distributed manually in the necessary positions. They used several variations of palm trees to create a tropical climate region and some additional trees to create an idea of a denser environment, placed in strategic points, to fit in the camera frame and not leave any spot uncovered, keeping a close representation of the reference. In the palms and trees, they selected variations of age between young, middle-aged, and adults. In addition, they also chose between dry and wet weather for some of them. For the main scene, they used one of Juan Antonio Monsalve's photographs as a base to represent the positioning and framing of the camera as close as possible to the original photograph. The lighting of this scene was done with a dome light, with Peter Guthrie's HDRI as the main light source for the reflections in sunlight. They kept the same dates and times for all scenes. They used the Solar North plugin to have more control over the exact position of the sun. In scene 2 there is no photographic reference, so the positioning of the camera and the framing of the scene were designed to obtain a second powerful image. The field of view used for this scene was 60 degrees and also used the vertical tilt camera effect with a value of 0.445 that makes possible the vertical alignment of the rows in the final rendering. The HDRI used for this scene and for scene 03 was the same HDRI. Downloaded from the Mediterranean Light site, which has a collection of excellent DIRs. Both scenes were illuminated by the same system as scene 1, but scene 01, with a different HDRI than scene 2 and 3. As for the Solar North plugin, for scene 1 they used the Solar North angle 224.5 degrees and for scenes 2 and 3, the Solar North angle 260 degrees. Last but not least, the night scene. Following exactly the same setup and the same idea of scene 2, the only changes were the HDRI and the creation of some simple rectangular lights to reproduce the artificial lights and an IES light for the ceiling spotlights. The HDRI was also from the Mediterranean light site. For this scene, they used only one light dome, with the respective HDRI and the visible artificial lights are all the lighting models used. They decided to keep the same positioning and framing of the camera as in scene 2. 
Now we come to the materials, one of the most interesting and important parts of the development of the scenes. I simply leave you some images with the information of the five most important materials used in the scenes. You can pause and analyze them yourselves. All the materials are quite simple and were created to be light and to have a nice result. For the rendering of the final images, they use these settings that we see on the screen. As for the settings, they were the same for all the scenes. The images were made with a maximum of 4.5. Since they didn't use any background and everything really existed in the scene, they suffered a bit with the rendering time. As for post-production, they tried to work as much as possible in O3DR before taking the rendering to post-production, which they did in Photoshop. Here, they use all the necessary render channels, fixing the layers enough to have a smooth production. To improve the post-production, they use the DOF Pro plugin for Photoshop that is nothing more than a professional depth of field generator. Downloaded from Richard Drosenman, according to them, this plugin is the leader in photorealistic depth of field generation for Photoshop. We leave you with the final images, but first if you found the video interesting please like and subscribe to analyze more projects.